Okay, you're going to think I'm crazy. You're going to think I'm a lunatic. But it is my belief that the 1990s Harley Davidson, all the models look better than they are today. You can't get past the ease that it is to work on an Evo motor. Now, let me give you a little example here. You know, you put your toolkit in both bikes. Put everything you need in both motorcycles. And then you go on a travel. And you're going through a state, say, like Iowa or in Illinois, anywhere in the Midwest. And if you know if you're from them places, there is a lot of cornfields. A lot of places where you're not going to have access to, say, Wi-Fi or a cell phone signal. Next thing you know, you're in the middle of nowhere wondering if, you know, Toto's up there in Kansas or something like this. It ain't Kansas anymore. And your bike, bike starts breaking down. There's two scenarios here. We're going to talk about the Evo and we're going to talk about, say, a Milwaukee 8 or even a twin cam. Now, if you would have broke down on a 1990s, say, fat boy, compared to the fat boys nowadays, you would be up the creek, if you know what I mean, on one of the newer models of fat boys. Because with an Evo, you'll be able to rip that motor apart right on the side of the road with what you have in your toolkit. Where say you have a modern 2023 Fatboy, you ain't doing nothing on it. For one, one of the things that I liked about the Evo was that it was carbureted. Now a lot of you are going to say, oh my god, that's ancient technology. Well, that carburation's really where you got that thump when it was running where you can't really duplicate that sound with a fuel injection but when it comes back to ease of working on it you're on the side of the road you can tear that bike up right there and throw in some temporary fixes to get you going where not now not now no you got to have a service truck come up there pick you up and that's after you walk about 10 miles to the nearest place where you need to use a phone or get a cell phone signal where the 1990s type of motorcycle you didn't have to do that and that's why you've seen a lot of people carrying their toolkits like they did because everything they had you can work on it now, I'm not banging on the newer models. It's just a person, a personal, how can I say it, a personal preference, if you will, to have something that is an Evo motor or even, you know, I could say maybe a twin cam, but the Evos were so easy to work with. That's why when I had a chance to get a 98 Classic, I did it in a heartbeat. It had low miles, but at the same time, I knew that engine back and forth, where now it's like, damn, you need a damn degree or you're in a place where you have to have it serviced by heart. Harley Davidson, they basically pulled the same uh, crap that GM, Ford, and all them pulled, meaning they wanted that to where their mechanics would have to work on it. Yeah, it's the basic premises, but at the same time, it ain't. Where no, really no Harley dealer is going to work on an Evo, but you don't have to worry about that because independent shops love Evos. Were there some problems with Evos? Yeah, you had the lifters that you had to replace, you know, the the bearings in the cam, but you usually would replace that putting in an Andrews or something like that. And then you had the base gaskets that would leak eventually. You know, you had to warm up an evolution because it would put that off for a while, but that's it's going to happen. That's the way them bikes were, but it was so easy to replace something like that compared to what it is now. You'd be lucky to change your oil on one of these damn bikes, and that's the way it was intended. Now, there wasn't all that electronic stuff that 
uh, Harley puts on their bikes now, and I know you have to evolve in the motorcycle and automobile manufacturing sector because everybody loves their technology. Everybody loves to be able to hit buttons and get all their flashy flash stuff. Where the 1990s, even the top of the line Ultra Classics, you didn't have much there as far as electronics are concerned. Hell, some of them carried CB radios and all that type of stuff. It wasn't necessary to have that kind of stuff. You had the bare bones motorcycle and I think a lot of people miss out on that nowadays. I know when I got the, the, the 2015 Lowrider, it took me a while to get used to it because it was a six speed, it had a lot more technology built into it than say a 1990s would have. It, it, it's like night and day in one hand you're saying oh man this is great with the technology the different safety features and on the other hand it's like man do I really need all this type of stuff where an Evo the biggest problem you would have with it they're great cruising motorcycles but when you started building them up a lot of people didn't you know they use the stock crankcase and all that instead of upgrading everything and that would give a major problem with the evo so yeah there's some uh, stuff that could go wrong with it but at the same time it really felt like you were riding for that freedom where now it's like on these superstar bikes as i call them it's like you're tied into it worrying about all this type of different electronics uh different gizmos where you really don't pay attention to the ride you're paying attention to come on you've seen it done people messing with their phone why they got the intercom in the motorcycle helmet you can't tell me that isn't true. That's what people do. So I really do prefer the 1990s evolution and them motorcycles in particular because it was more about the freedom of the ride instead of making all the trinklets. So I can guarantee you if you were ever in that situation where you're going through a cornfield and you have a little basic knowledge of maintenance or repair, you're gonna be wanting to be on that evolution because basically to tear that damn engine apart right on the side of the road, pull it out of the frame if you got the right tools. Get it fixed put it back on and get you to where you need to be as far as getting parts and all that to get it serviced but at least you're out of that cornfield where I believe you'd be in a hell of a situation if you got on it you know in a Milwaukee 8 because you just won't have the ability to be able to work on that bike on the side of the road. Now I might be wrong, let me know in the comments section what you think, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on this. Would you rather have an Evo or would you want a Milwaukee 8 if you're in the middle of a cornfield miles and miles away with no cell phone uh, service? Rock on. Goodbye, vamoose, adios, ciao, so long, get your hat jacked. Number one internet biker radio show is now available on Spotify. Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode.